My name is Agnes Sabados, and I'll be one of the participants of this live roundtable discussion lasting for about 45, hopefully quite interesting minutes. As part of our three, our three days long section of the 35th National Scientific Students Association Conference, and taking advantage of the online nature of our OTDK conference, we, the organizers, planned four roundtable discussions for the lunch and dinner breaks of yesterday and today. These roundtable discussions are about the past, present, and especially the future of chemistry, chemistry being for all of us the central science. <clears throat> Most likely, we also share a common interest in understanding the role of chemistry in our culture. Chemistry is as much as we chemists make of it. Thus, we invited four past, present and future presidents of chemical societies for these roundtable discussions. You are watching the third of these roundtable discussions. Let me now briefly greet our guest of today. Aujourd'hui, notre invité de la première séance de l'après-midi est Madame la professeure Gilberte Chambou de l'Université Gustave Eiffel. Professeure Chambou est l'ancienne présidente de la Société chimique de France et elle partagera avec nous son point de vue sur la chimie et surtout sur le rôle de la chimie dans notre vie personnelle et dans celle de la société. Bienvenue, Madame la professeure, à notre conférence. Nous vous remercions beaucoup d'avoir accepté notre invitation. Je vais continuer en anglais si vous me le permettez. Thank you. Further participants of, these, of this roundtable uh, round are Professor Attila Chassar and Professor Istvan Soloy. We three are heads of the organizing and executive committees of the section Chemistry and Chemical Industry of the 35th National Scientific Students Association Conference. It is our privilege to lead the discussion with Professor Chambou. Nevertheless, you, our audience, are not left alone. While you are watching this conversation via a YouTube channel, you can also address questions to Professor Chambou, who is happy to answer them. In fact, I strongly encourage you to ask questions and our moderators on the YouTube channel will notify us about these questions and we will ask them from our guests. You may ask your questions either in Hungarian or in English, whichever you find more convenient. Before our guest would leave this channel, I'd like to assure her that the questions will be asked by us in English. Let me introduce now Professor Chambeau. From 1972 to 1992, Professor Gilbert Chambou was professor in the chemistry department of the École Normale Supérieure in Paris. Between 1992 and 2014, she was a professor at the University Paris-Est-Marne-la-Vallée, now part of the Gustave Eiffel University. As a scientist, Professor Chambou has been a molecular physical chemist as well as a computational chemist. Professor Chambeau was deeply involved at the European level in the various steps of the implementation, which was called the Tuning Project between 2003 and 2005 of the harmonization of the higher level educational curriculum of Europe following the Bologna decision and the Bologna reform plans in 1999. Among the various achievements and contributions to science and society of Professor Chambeau, one should mention that in 2007, she was nominated as Knight in the order of the French Légion d'honneur. In the same year, she was nominated at the board of the French Chemical Industries. In 2012, she has been nominated as Chevalier in the order of the French Palme Académique. In 2015, she was elected at the presidency of the French Chemical Society. And since 2016, she is an elected member of the Academy of Europe. Now switching to science, Professor Chambeau has been a very active researcher in the field of computational chemistry, including raw vibrational spectroscopy of Renner Teller triatomic systems, study of negative ions, investigation of the stability, reactivity, and characterization of carbon chains and anions exploring the electronic structure and the spectroscopy of small metallic compounds, and the chemi and physisorption 
of hydrogen molecules on metallic surfaces. If you had to single out one topic of these many topics that you and your group pursued and to some, some extent still pursue, which one would you pick? Which one do you feel the most exciting and most important to chemistry and to yourself? And could you give an explanation to? Okay, so thank you very much for your nice introduction and uh, good morning to everybody. I am very pleased to, to share this time with you here today. And um, to answer this particular question of my scientific interest, I would say both mentioned are very exciting. First is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is the uh, interaction, is a result of interaction of light with matter, with molecule. And this is very important to determine the, the, the signature of molecules. And particularly in the infrared and the, in the UV visible spectrum, it gives you a lot of information. You can identify, for example, intermediates. And just to be short and at the moment, I can tell you that um, all the observations that are going to be made on planets like March will be communicated via spectroscopic statement. So this is fascinating. The other field, which is completely different, is the interaction of uh, molecules, small molecules with surfaces and for example it is uh, well it is central to the all the problem of catalysis and catalysis is one of the of the i would say the the main tools that will be used by the chemist in the next future to to avoid a lot of problem of chemistry all over the world so this is very important as well Thank you very much. You have touched upon topics that were just, uh, you know, um, I mean, subjects of uh, the presentations of today yeah. <laughs> during our conference. Um, another question uh, which I would follow, uh, a question that I would follow with is, uh, is um, we would be interested to, to have uh, your, uh, your insight in the, in the, in the in the way computational chemistry changed during your career uh, and perhaps uh, if you if you if you feel like you could you you could also provide some predictions for the role of computational chemistry in the future yeah okay so computational chemistry is as in the name it is calculation of molecules so it is the way you can deal with a molecule. For that, you need equation and you need to know how the relative motion of electrons and nucleus in the, in the molecules are moving, interacting and so and so. Then if you can know the electronic structure and main geometry, stable geometry of molecules and of uh, Various in various isomers, then you can predict the properties, the immediate properties, the reactivities of the molecules, and so all all this is of course extremely uh, interesting for now because you know what what you cannot uh, synthesize you can always try to calculate particularly very reactive species that you cannot deal with in the lab, then you can you can play with them with a computer. So just to, to, to show you, you know, uh, I remember very well the beginning because I started with computational chemistry. So for 40, 50 years ago, and then we had huge computer, huge calculator. They, they needed to be in uh, uh, rooms with air conditioning because the, it, we had to cool them. It was really heaters, you know, heaters and, and so. And, <clears throat> and with all these apparatus, so 40 years ago, I say, we can calculate with good results, uh, H2 molecule or O2 molecule more difficult or F2 molecule even more difficult. And, for this, we needed 
I would say to, to have a, a full understand of the molecule, we needed well, several hours. Now you can do that in a fraction of a second in a hand calculator. So just to give you the scale, completely change. And with that, it opened, of course, new perspectives. And for example, uh, you know, complex structure. I, I, I was speaking of molecules interacting with surfaces. This is very tricky problem because we have on one hand an infinite system and on the other one a local aid system. Then you need a lot of approximation, but you can really focus on the particular place where the action takes place. So this is very interesting and very, very promising. And also, of course, the, the, you, can, you can study proteins. You can make calculation in system with more than several, several thousand of individual molecules, atoms and molecules. You can see the structure changing of this protein. And all this, you know, is of course extremely important for, for, the, for further development. You know, but this was made possible because of course computer science and electronics improved dramatically during all these years and the size of the calculator reduces con reduced considerably but this was not the only reason that you, you can do it in a pocket calculator now this is also that there was new method method implemented new algorithm there was vectorization pro programmation made a lot of effort and now so this has been combined to 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 assess the, the progress of computational chemistry. And just to give you a perspective, you know, now in each experimental laboratory there is a computational chemist because it is as useful to study the problem as the experiment. It is really a combination of exchanges between between experimentalists and, and calculators, computer, computer person. Okay, yes, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much yes. for this elaborate answer. Uh, uh, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing how, how computational facilities evolved and I, I, I would just like to add that uh, I think it is hard to imagine for those who did not live this through. Uh, but uh, with this I would, I would uh, like to uh, add the word to my colleague. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Agnes. So just uh, uh, to extend a little bit of question of Agnes, uh, I would like to ask you, what do you think, which are the fields of chemistry that you feel the most exciting and most promising nowadays? Can you say a few words about this for the young researchers here in the conference? <laughs> yes, I, I think one field is, well, I spoke already of catalysis, but catalysis is a method. Uh, in terms of a field, I think the, the, the field of materials, you know, solid materials, is really fantastic for the future. Because the, the intimate structure of the material can be designed, you know, for a, a particular purpose. And material can be made lighter, stronger, and they can, you know, in, in for the planes, for example, there have been a, a, a mixed structure of carbon and metal and things like that that made the, the planes uh, less less heavy and then the, the, the consumption of, of, of fuels decreased. So this is an example. Also there are all the materials which are human compatible, you know, for to repair the bones and, and all this. And so in the field of material it can be polymers, so organic a big organic structure, but it can be also uh, inorganic structure. And I think this is really a field where there is a lot to do, a lot to improve, and this is very interesting uh, field for for the young chemists. The other one, the other one is of course the the uh, molecular uh, chemistry. You know what chemistry uh, uh, is can work from very, very tiny objects and molecules and to huge objects and material. In, in, the, in the spectrum 
Well, in between, there are nanomaterials, of course. But in, in the field of molecules um, of much complex but small structure, there is a lot also of innovation. For example, just one example, you know, all the pharmaceutical, you know, the, the, these molecules which are very active for in medicine. Long times ago, or not so long time ago, you had to, to take a huge portion of medicals to, to, to care you. Now, you can adjust a very small fraction of this pharmaceutical, but you put them not only in a syringe and you put it in the blood, no, you put it in a small envelope with sensors around in this envelope and this small uh, missile or small object will move in the blood and go directly to the place where uh, its action is required. And this is also a fantastic, fantastic field. The, the, the complex small molecules and they, they are designed for a perfect uh, action, I would say. And this is fantastic. <laughs> Also. Yes, uh, but I, uh, I think also it's, it's true that uh, that chemists and chemistry can help to solve um, the, inform the important problems of, of humanities like, like environmental problems. And I know that uh, that in, in France uh, and for the French people, it's, it's very important, I mean, to, to care about the environment. So if you would say a few words about the contribution of chemists and chemistry to the to solving, um, solving chemi uh, environmental problems. Yes, I can say a few words. You know, I, as a chemist, I am always horrified when there is a contestation, a blame on chemicals. Uh, but, you know, these chemicals are essential, you know, for our life. This is, we, we are not blaming the chemist. We are blaming the side effects of products. And these side effects generally are resulting from our own action of the consumer action. For example, pollution. You know, you cannot imagine what we, you have a shampoo or when you go to the hairdresser, you know, to fall a freezer or thing like that. You know, you cannot imagine the, the quantity of rubbish which is going in the, in the water. Just, just very simple action. You know, in, in your house also, with your cars, you know, the pollution, you know very well that Unfortunately, during this confinement time, due to the pandemic, the air pollution in big cities reduced considerably. For what? For the cars, because there was there was no car moving here and forth, and and so it was in a sense. Uh, so people can realize that the chemical are, are resulting from our own improper action. What, what can we can say uh, concerning the, the, the factories, the chemical factories? Nowadays, a, a lot of care is taken to, to uh, control all, all the side effects of, of, of the factories where they are producing, producing chemicals. And unfortunately, there are there also side effects. If I just mention what happened in Beirut, Lebanon, in 2019, what happened there? It was a very simple chemical. It was nitrate, nitrate, nitrogen, no, uh, ammonium nitrogen, or something like that. It is a fertilizer, you know. And when you put it in huge quantity, and then in some places there is a fire, then you have a huge explosion. It is not due to the particle. It is just due to unprotected storage. <laughs> and this, you know, we have to be very, very careful of it. And for the environment, the, the, the chemists are trying to work to, to remediate also. They are, for, they are uh, fighting against the pollution. They are depolluting the water. They are depolluting the, the soils. And uh, one a g very good thing that the chemists are doing is they are sparing, sparing material, sparing energy. So they are working on smaller and smaller quantities. 
You know, the detectors are very small now. You know, all, all these uh, rare elements, you know, the, the rare metals or things like that, they are used in small quantity and they are, there is a recycling also. But they are not thrown away uh, at the end of their, of their life. So the, the cycle of the life of, for all the chemicals is now really an issue for the chemists. So this is how we can try to work for the environment. You know. Okay. Uh, as the past president of the French Chemical Society, could you please introduce us uh, how the uh, what the structure of, of research in France and what is the role of the universities and the CNRS and how they are connected to each other? Because it would be interesting to, to learn yes. about. Yeah. So yes, in, in, in France, we have uh, for, for the research, we have on one hand the universities as almost everywhere in the world. And we have also some research institutes. So there is a CNRS, Centre National de Recherche Scientifique, but for the general research, I would say. But there is also in CERN for medical research, there is in RA, E N Ha, A, for the, all the research in agronomy and, oh. okay, and there's also another one, there's not so many, there's another one for co computer science. Mm -hmm. And among this institute, which have a national policy, a national, it is nationally institution, there is a national treatment of, of the personal, you know, the people working, mm -hmm. among all this, of course, CNRS is very particular because CNRS and university are very much intricate. Mm. You know, they, there is, I, it was also the policy of, of the, the last years, uh, but it has always been that the uh, CNRS people and university members, I mean, professor, uh, assistant professor and things like that, they are working together in the same place, in the same laboratories. And all the, the, the resources for, 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 the, uh, for the work is provided from both sides. You know, from the university, we receive money from the Ministry of Research anyway, but with us its own money. And from the CNRS, which is centralized, and we give money to the particular laboratory. In chemistry, for example, we have something like 150 chemical laboratories all over France, which are mixed structure. And for this, you know, this is interesting also for, for the, the career of the people. You know, the career of the uh, researcher in the CNRS is accompanied by the CNRS institution. They have control, they have a, a central national committee, which is judging them. For the, in the university, they are, the, the career are organized by the university themselves. But there are some possibilities of channeling from, generally, it is always in the same direction. <laughs> so people from the research, after a certain amount of time, want to, to do something else. Mm -hmm. And they are recruited in the university as professor. So that it doesn't change so much their life. They are still continuing. Sometimes they change from and play one place to another one. But this is this is very nice, by the way. And the, the CNRS can provide um, big facilities for the research. For example, CNRS give a lot, give a lot of money to the big computer center uh, in France. Give also money to the synchrotron uh, big equipment. And all this is supported uh, at the national level. The university cannot cannot uh, provide that. So this is very intricate system. Mm -hmm. And so far, the people are rather happy with that. <laughs> okay, that's great. Okay, and next question from Attila, I think. So thank you, uh, Gilbert. Uh, let's continue with research. And uh, we all know that since perhaps the 18th century, France gave a very large number of scientists, mathematicians also to the world. By now we do know and appreciate 
that they significantly change the course of science. In chemistry, probably the best known name is Antoine Laurent Lavoisier from the 18th century. And uh, what's your opinion? What gave this incredible strength to French science? Why could France lead the world in science for several generations? This is a tricky question, Attila. Thank you for it. <laughs> By the way, you know, I was looking uh, to try to understand the origin of that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you have to trace that not in the 18th century, but in the century before. By the way, it was it was uh, with Louis the Fourteenth, our uh, solar king. <laughs> But this is not due to him. It is due to a fantastic personage, which is Colbert. Colbert, I don't know if people know about it. We know the name for sure, of, yes. Or because there is also Colbertism, which is a, a kind of economic philosophy. And by the way, this comes from this guy. It was a strong minister of the king, and he realized that he has to, to structure you know what, the industry, the industry. And so he constructed factories, he called it manufacture, for glass, for uh, linen, for dyes and things like that. And because of that, then he needed innovation. He needed scientists. And so, and he created, by the way, Colbert, created the Academy of Science. Well, it was it was a king, of course, but it was in uh, 1666. Six, what it is. And, you know, then there was conglomeration of scientists with Echenden. And then come Lavoisier. And then come the French Revolution. And the, the, well, this come later. Lavoisier was part of the French Revolution, unfortunately. But in the 18th century... You know that part of... Yes, yes, yes. Yes, but in the 18th century, you know, there was this... Um, uh, for example, Ms. Lavoisier. Lavoisier was working in one of these institutions connected to industry, control, uh, connected to the control of powder. Powder, it was... So several kinds of powder, but more, most important was powder for explosive. Mm -hmm. And okay. it was the saltpeter. And, and so they, he worked, by the way, to improve the properties of saltpeter. But it was also for uh, powder for uh, agriculture, you know, uh, the agronomy. And all this, and because of the, the, the fact that the, the country was richer, then they had very good apparatus, very accurate scale. And you know, if you have accurate scale, you can go little by little to, to something which is fantastic, the discovery of the elements. And you know, uh, also uh, this Lavoisier, Lavoisier, of course, discovered uh, oxygen, but you know, at the same time, Presley was also discovering oxygen. So it is not the only method of that. But Lavoisier was working already in a kind of laboratory in the 18th century. Uh, I mean, the, the science in the chemical science go went from alchemy to chemistry, with molecules, elements, and things like that. And just an, a, a short story, one of the assistants of Lavoisier was, the name was Dupont de Nemours. And this Dupont de Nemours, the young assistant uh, for doing the research with Lavoisier, this Dupont de Nemours created a factory, a powder factory in um, the beginning in, in uh, 1802. And this was the beginning of this huge uh, chemical factory, which is now called Dupont, you know. Yeah. And this came, you know, so this is a, a son of Lavoisier, Dupont. <laughs> and yes. because what the, the, the trick, what, by the way, was the fact that science and industry was connected. 
and this pushes uh, all all the innovation. And you know, after that, after that, there have been there have been, for example, um, uh, Saint Clair de Ville who work on the aluminium. You know, he was also just at the he, he, he was born at the beginning of the 19th century. A bit later, but they were working in in uh, what is now called laboratories. Before that, no, it was the old cellar of the alchemist, and then so this really changed. So remember really? Colbert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will remember Colbert from now on. Thank you. <laughs> and then my next question is still, you know. Uh, uh, science and industry, and science and industry are represented by within the French Chemical Society. By the way, I think that was founded in 1857, so that was also a long time ago. And then when you had to describe in an interview with three words, the French Chemical Society, SCF, which means something else for many of us, I guess. But anyway, so, so SCF you describe as information, promotion, and representation. Can you say a few words about uh, these three words uh, uh, for our audience? So first I would say that um, a chemical society in France, but everywhere, I, I guess, is a place where you can put together the chemists of a nation. And it is, I am not nationalist, but it is important to know that uh, the, the chemical societies are alive in each country with their own language. Because their own language is very important for the exchange at the beginning of the career of the young people. You know, we have our uh, national magazine, you have in Hungary also your national magazine in Hungarian. And this is important to to transfer information of chemistry to the public, to our community, to the big family, where young chemists, young and senior chemists can meet easily and exchange. So this is, I think, the main role of the, of the, of the society, of this kind of association. But so, forward, forward. So, <laughs> Uh, I think it is important to to for the promotion of the of the of our topic of chemistry to the public. And one of our achievement recent achievement was to have a, a, a frequent contact with the politician. We were asked, you know, there are some some um, working group in uh, the parliament, and they are asking us, for example, we we made a kind of review on the material for the future or things like that, you know, and for environment also. So this is important that the, the, the politicians have a, a contact with the, I would say, the expert and, and we can provide this kind of expertise. The other point which is important is, I said that it was important to be national, but it is also important to be international. And so in, in Europe, we have the chance to have already a federation of the chemical society within the European Chemical Society, UKEMS, which is a federation, and we, where we are working together, trying to, to improve the perception of chemistry and to do action also. And um, so we are in the French Chemical Society, we work, of course, to, to have this, and we have regular exchanges with the other societies. And what we, we did more recently, I think in the last, during the last, my mandate, by the way, also, it was to, to have new um, uh, contract with American Chemical Society and Chinese Chemical Society. Because they are, well, they are the society where it is moving. ACS, of course, is huge, but the, the Chinese Chemical Society is huge as well. It will be huge as well. And and what what is important to to have this exchange also because they are we are working on a different with different culture, and this is 
very important for the young generations to change. And we have created also <coughs> the uh, Young Chemist Network within the French Chemical Society. And as I can see now, there are Young Chemist Network in almost all the societies because they have different issues. They are they have also another way of uh, communication also. And so this was important to have them. And of course, this national network are connected to the European network, the EYCN, European Young Chemist Network, and to the International Young Chemist Network also, which is more American-like and things like that. But this is important for them that we can provide to the young chemists the opportunity to to meet and to travel to travel virtually but more physically it's better and to to have um, a closer contact to what is their the, their science in and the way of life in uh, in other countries so this was this was uh, i would say the the, the main points to to have this uh, young chemists international exchange and uh, communication what so we... thank you very much. Uh, that was very, very interesting. And now I'm, so to say, giving back the microphone to Agnes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just present myself in video because we have uh, a question from the audience, which I, I think uh, is, uh, is worth to, to, to ask you. And that is about the role of interdisciplinarity. Can someone with a different degree contribute to chemistry and you can approach it from the opposite direction. Can a chemist work in a seemingly unrelated field? Well, interdisciplinarity is essential. You know, there, there was there is a, cent, a central question that chemistry is a central discipline. By the way, it is. Uh, I I mentioned material material for transportation for energy also as well. Uh, material for uh, well also for the medicine you know you, you can the, the biologists work and but they need also chemists so uh, this is really I would say chemistry is connected to interdisciplinary domain but but which is very important to make to make transdisciplinary interdisciplinary you have to be disciplinary as a basis. So, you know, you cannot do anything good if you have not your own field, your own corner, your own expertise. And, uh, but there are, of course, big subjects which is have to be interdisciplinary. All the subjects um, of the, uh, which are the, I would say, the social subject means energy, uh, uh, environment and S. You know, these three subjects are from the basis interdisciplinary. And uh, by the way, we, we, we started um, a new, we have division, I have not sp uh, spoken so much of my the French Chemical Society, but in the French Chemical Society, we have something like 15 division, thematic division, and we have also regional uh, section. But in the thematic division, they were basically related to one specific domain. But we have created in 2016-17 a new section, which is energy. And there really, so this is the first interdisciplinary region. And if, if I can say just a word about that, when, when I, I, I was in the CNRS, there was a problem of structuring again, you know, a restructuration of the CNRS. And we had a lot of debate because in the CNRS, there are the Institute of Chemistry, the Institute of Physics, of Mathematics, of Biology, of Computer Science, of Sociology. And we were thinking, are we putting all this down, put a big matrices, and take, I would say, uh, not the diagonal terms, but something mixing together to have interdisciplinary institute. But we did not do, it, do that because we were really thinking that in the university, 
you are not teaching interdisciplinarity, but you teach disciplines. You know, so you teach physics, you teach chemistry, you teach mathematics. And the CNRS, because it is really close to the university, wanted to, to keep the same kind of structure. So first of all, we are professional. And if we know well, of course, our business, then we can work at the border and we can try to learn how to speak with the other. I, I, I like this. I like this uh, answer very much. I think this, this really gives a clear uh, uh, perspective on how to how to proceed. And actually, the um, the the other I'm, I'm just receiving the 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 questions from the audience and the other question that we got is uh, somewhat related to this uh, that you were just uh, talking about and uh, may it, it may be i'm afraid our, our last uh, topic to discuss because uh, time is running out uh, so the question is about uh, is about high school chemistry being decisive in informing future scientists and the question asks about uh, about uh, teaching chemistry at the pre-university level yes how to teach what to teach how to how to keep uh, the younger generation interested orient them yeah you know as you know in france we have a strange system which is also the heritage of of, of the uh, last century of the before last century, it was the, the, the creation of uh, high school of chemistry. You know, we have engineer school, but you know, we have engineer school. But in in the other countries, they have also technical universities. So I think we 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 well, we are more or less all, all in the same in the same uh, fight. I would say to 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 we need chemistry. We need chemists and. We, the chemists that, that we need are not only computational chemists, I'm sorry, but they have to be experimental chemists. They have to, 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 to know what are the solvent, the good solvent, what are the conditions, how to, to do clear, uh, good chemistry. And you know the problem is that when the, the young generation, after the, the, the school, I would say, arrive in the university, generally they have very small experience in practical work. Practical exercise have been, I, I know the, the programs, the teaching program, the educational program in France, and the part of this experimental science, which is so chemistry, physics, natural science, they, they are going less and less because there is nowadays the computer science uh, teaching in, 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 the, in the school, because it is needed. We cannot avoid that. But for, because of that, they reduce. And then the students arrive in the university. I, I remember, you know, that when I was doing the inscription of new students, they were always asking, are they practical? Are they practical work in the teaching? Yes. They should be. They should. There should be. And I think you can learn a lot from this experimental work. You can learn everything because, first of all, you, you learn how to use um, apparatus in a good way and this very careful way. Did and you yourself do experiments when you were a secondary school student? What yes, some, some. I, I, I think I did more. I did more, but it was well. It was basically analytical chemistry. It was pH or thing like that. Because <laughs> you, you, oh. or, or maybe the synthesis of, of aspirin, mm. maybe mm. because it is an easy synthesis. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yes, it was very difficult to to do mm. real chemistry, just ca colors and things like that. But now you know they can they can play with shampoo with. Um, uh, also, they can uh, try to have uh, synthetic polymers by just by putting two two components together, and so this can can be done. I think a big effort has to be done in in the in the school before before the baccalaureate to to implement experimental chemistry. 
in the, in the, in the teaching. This is what they like. <laughs> I'm afraid that I think these are these are very proper closing words. I'm 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 afraid we will have to we will have to stop at this point. The the we would have been interested to to have your thoughts about further more topics. But uh, we must thank you very much for joining us, and uh, and we are really grateful for sharing your view you views with us. And uh, uh, I right now, I think my role is to announce that uh, maybe in Hungarian, uh, just just very briefly in English. So we have uh, video video presentations from secondary school students who are participating in a contest. And now we are going to see two pieces of videos uh, on uh, being influencers in chemistry. <laughs> OK. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you also very much for your welcome. Okay, I was happy to Goodbye. do it. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.